All right, guys, welcome back to Machine Organization and Programming. This is the second half of Friday's lecture. Uh, I'm going to just do a quick Vim tutorial today, um, so that way you guys have some like tools you can start practicing to get good using uh, Vim text editor and follow along during the guided learning activities, during video lectures, and doing your homework. All right, so let me uh, pop over into a CSL machine, log into Vim, and I'll be right back. Vim, I've got a text file here that I'm going to start working on. I'm going to essentially write a guide to using Vim during this lecture, and then uh, you can download that file later and keep it for reference. And as you're working on the projects, pull that up if you want to like start incorporating yet another technique. All right, so Vim is a mode-based editor. It's got several different modes available to it. The one we're most likely going to be used the most often is insert mode, but it's actually going to start us off in navigation mode. So navigation mode or command mode, I've heard it called is uh, designed to be highly efficient at moving around with the keyboard to select text, to manipulate it, to move the cursor. But to get started, we're going to want to enter insert mode so we can actually type some text. So I'm just going to push I, and now I'm in, I'm on the wrong screen. I'm gone. So I've got my recording software over on the right, and it was currently in recording. <laughs> cursor, my focus was on the wrong software. Okay, so I pushed I, and now you can see in the lower left-hand corner that I'm in insert mode, and now I can just type some text. Okay. Hmm. I've got some interesting line break issues going on right here. Let me see if I can turn that off. Okay, I got that fixed. Um, let me show you what I did. So I think this is a, because I'm recording and I have the text set so large so you guys can actually read it. Um, but to do that, so I'm currently in navigation mode or command mode. So what I'm gonna do is type just a couple of commands to set different options. To turn on word wrapping or line wrapping, it's just set wrap. And that will cause the lines to not just carry on over the right, and you can see them, they're actually wrapping around. I only have two lines there, they're both numbered, but they're wrapped for us. And the other thing I had to do was set text width equal zero. So that tells me how many characters in a line before it breaks. And it had been set to like 79, which was actually slightly more than what you could see on this editor window. So, but by setting to zero now, it's gonna wrap when it gets to the edge of that screen. And I think that's how it works. These are probably things you guys won't need to worry about setting, but I just wanted to like describe what I did so that should you be following along and happen to have a giant font, um, you know, if you're recording someday, you may need to know this. All right. So next up, what I want to do is talk about just, um, I've got some text here, uh, insert mode here. Let me just uh, pick a spot. If I click right here, I, now I can, uh, it's in insert mode and I can add extra text right there. So just put some garbage in. If I want to undo that, I need to go back to command mode. You will undo that change. Okay. Now second, if I push A, that's going to insert to the right. So it moves the cursor one character over to the right. This is extremely useful if you are at the end of a line. I'm on that period right now, and I want to just keep typing. So I'm going to add another sentence. If I can type. Just like that. Okay, just add another sentence. Okay, um, next up, some other options for getting into insert mode. If I type um, lowercase, O, let me go up here. I'm at the end of line one right now. No, I'm not. I'm at the end of line one. If I want to go back into insert mode but jump down a line, that's going to be a lowercase o. So that gets me another line here. Let me just put that in. Okay, and then here I'm going to go to line three. And if I go with capital O, that will enter insert mode, the line above. So, okay, so I lost an E there. So I'm going to go back to insert mode right there on that character, throw my E in, and we're good. All right, so that's a bunch of different ways to enter insert mode. Uh, I've got letter I, letter A, 
lowercase o, uppercase o. Now that I've got some text here, I can start talking about navigation. Um, so if I'm in navigation mode or command mode, the keys um, H, J, K, and L, just four in a row on your keyboard there, will move your cursor around. So on the leftmost one, it's H, that'll move the cursor to the left. L is the rightmost one that moves the cursor to the right. And then K will move up a line, and J will move down a line. So it's designed to be worked to use your fingers without having to go grab the mouse to do something. So if I just pop up, oops, I missed. Uh, I can move around. I can also use numbers. So suppose I want to go exactly eight characters to the left, I can type eight. And then of those four keys, H was on the left. So I can just get H and it moves over. And I can do the same thing again. H, H, H. Oops, I missed. <clears throat> All right, so um, H, J, K, and L to move around. Okay, next up, um, some things we're just navigating like during the entire file. If I can, uh, lowercase gg, oh, I'm on the wrong screen. There we go, now we're back in Vim. I switched over to my recording software. Okay, gg goes to the top of the page, capital G goes down to the bottom. So let me go back down to my last line. Insert gg to top file. Jump to the end of the file. I can also do, what am I doing? After a period, we'll put a period there. We'll put one here. Um, I can do uh, g with a number. So, and that will go to a particular line number. So for example, if I want to jump up to line four, I can go back to navigation mode four, capital G, we'll jump up to line four. So uh, let's see here. So number followed by G, we'll do it that way, jumps to a particular line. Okay, next up, um, one of the most common things I do is actually searching for text. So just switch back to Vim. Um, I'm in command mode right now. If I wanna search for something, uh, slash is the keyword I need, or the command. I'm gonna search for the word, let's go with um, file. So I type file, I push enter, and then it's uh, moved my cursor, the green cursor right there, to the beginning of the first word file, and it's highlighted the rest of those words. Now to switch back and forth, I can use lowercase n to advance forward through my text, or I can use capital N. So N stands for next. Um, lowercase is the easier one. And typically, you'll be going uh, to the next one to the next one. So I can just type N back and forth. Um, capital N goes the other way. All right, let me uh, put a comment in. Okay, next up, um, some more navigation. Um, here I am on line nine. I'm gonna type K a few times to move up into the middle of the text. I've got a couple more options. Um, w, B, and E. Uh, so W will take me to the next word. It moves to the first character of the next word as I type W. B will go to the beginning of the previous, uh, previous word. Beginning of the previous word. W takes me to the beginning of the next word. B goes to the beginning of the previous word. And then um, E will go to the end of the next word. All right, next up, more um, navigation, line-based navigation. So right now I'm in command mode. I'm going to jump up with K to a few lines. I've got my cursor there in the middle. Um, the letter zero, or I suppose number zero, will take you to the beginning of the line, and the dollar sign will take you to the end of the line. So zero, dollar sign. I'm not sure what to call this. Word jumping? Here, let me just, I'm going to move the cursor up. We'll move it over here to a word. If I type star, that's shift eight, it will go to the next occurrence of that word. So there we go. So I've got it on two that all over the place. Um, if I use the pound sign, that goes to the previous occurrence. Um, actually, uh, let me jump to the word occurrence. So right now my cursor is on the T there. So that is, if I go one, two, three, four words to the right, so I can type four W, it'll jump over to that word. And then I can use star to jump to the next occurrence of the word occurrence. I'm just having fun. But I've got some words highlighted there from the last uh, little demo I did. If you have highlighted words you want to get rid of, a quick and easy way to do that is 
to just do a search with slash for some garbage text that's definitely not in there. And then when you go back into insert mode, uh, all the highlight is gone, quick and easy. All right, next up, uh, I just put in a little piece of code right here. I wanna talk about jumping between uh, brackets, braces, or parentheses. So here I'm in uh, command mode, just push the escape a couple times. I'm gonna go to the end of this line with dollar sign so that my cursor is over a bracket. You'll notice in the mode I've got it right now, it automatically highlights the matching um, curly brace right there. But if I want to jump between them and actually move the cursor to the end of this brace, it's a uh, percent. Percent will take me back to any matching brace. So if I go up a line, we'll just do K, move over with L. Now I'm on that one. The brace for the for loop, I can do that. Same deal with parentheses. Let me see, where have I got some parentheses? We'll go K, L, and now I'm on a parenthesis. That will jump to the matching parenthesis right there. Very useful for spotting uh, things that are missing uh, their matching part or parenthesis or brace. All right, I already went ahead and put in my uh, next two comments. Just if you're in insert mode and you spot a place where you have an extra character, like if I've got an extra letter in there, uh, just lowercase x will delete exactly the character under the cursor. Um, R, however, if I type R, will let me type one more letter and that will replace the text under the cursor. So let's just move over here. Let's see, if I replace the T, I guess I've got two good choices for words. We'll go with, um, so I'm gonna push R and then N to switch that to next. Okay, but that's not what I really want to see. I'm gonna replace R, put the T back, and we won't use the other word for this lecture. All right, next up, deleting text. So D will actually cut is probably a better word because I can still paste it. Um, uh, anyway, cut text. So D is always followed by one of the navigation commands. So right here, I've got my um, cursor on the word T, uh, the T of text. I'm going to push D. And then if I want to just go to the end of the line, that's the dollar sign. It will delete everything to the end of the line. Now I've cut that so I can push P to paste it back in. If I want to just delete uh, two characters, I can type D, and then if I want the T and the E, I can go 2L, so that's just going to move the cursor over two characters, it deletes those. Now, they're ready to be pasted, so put those back. Um, I put them in the wrong spot, I put them in the middle of the word, so I'm going to just undo that with U, I'm going to push U again to undo, and I really needed to move the cursor over one spot to make that look good, instead of pasting them in the middle. Um, if I want to delete the entire line, that's DD. Uh, and again, you to undo that. Um, anyway, so always followed with movement keys. Uh, something else, the copy function is actually Y. So I can do that with um, the same thing here. Let me just move over. So if I wish to copy the word cut right here, I put the cursor on the C. Uh, the command is Y, and then I need 3L to copy the... Um, the three letters, and then I'm going to navigate down, down, and then uh, P to paste that word. And I can keep doing that. I can paste many times if I want. In fact, if uh, I want, I can do like nine P at the same time and just get a whole bunch of them. So most of these things work with the uh, numbers as well. So I'm going to delete this line. We don't need that. Only a uh, couple more topics that I want to address. Uh, first up, let me just move over to the paste. Um, so the third mode that I want to talk about, so, so far we've talked about command mode or navigation mode, same thing. We talked about insert mode and the four different ways you can get to insert mode. The next mode is called visual mode. It's maybe better to think of it as more or less highlight mode. And to get there, I've got three choices and there's three different versions of it. The first is just lowercase v, v for visual, I see the visual right there. And now I can navigate with the h, j, k, and l. So my cursor is on the P. I'm just going to move it over, and now it's going to highlight this. So now I've got the word paste highlighted. And from here, I can either delete that with D. I can copy it with Y. Y stands for yank. And now I'm out of visual mode. I'm back in command because I did something. I yanked the text. So I'm going to move down, and now I can paste that. All right. So uh, I'll do that real quick. And then the next mode is actually line-based visual mode. So that is capital V. So shift to V will copy the whole text. And I can get more than one line at a time by just using the navigation key. So I, I clicked J there to move down. Now I've got two lines highlighted. So I'm going to just push Y to copy those. And then we'll navigate down and P to paste them. And it copied both lines. So V, think of it as highlight mode. 
And then finally, let me see here, what's a good way to demo this? 2DD, get rid of those two lines. The last one is Control V is block mode. So check this out. I'm going to navigate over to the word will right here. I'm going to do Control V to get into visual block mode. And then let's see, J to move down, L to move over, and now I've got a block of text. From here, I can Y to copy that. I can uh, J to move down, and then when I press P, it'll paste it. So I've just added the word will three times right there. And in fact, I can do this in the middle of any line, more or less anywhere. So let me just hop back up here. Let's go over here, and we'll just stick three wills. How about right here? So P to paste, and right in the middle of the sentence, it adds this block of text. Obviously, for like a descriptive uh, demo about how to use Vim, that really messes things up. So I'm going to undo that. And then I'm going to undo those last three wills that I just placed. And um, But that is extremely useful if you have uh, um, a bunch of repetitive looking kinds of... All right. And just as I wrap up here, um, I just want to mention one more thing about visual mode. So if I go here, if I use Shift V to get into line based visual mode, JJ to get uh, the next two lines down, um, the bracket, the angle brackets, so the greater than and less than, will actually um, <clears throat> indent or re remove indentation. So I'll make a quick comment about that. All right, this is going to wrap things up for me. Just the last three things that you probably the most important thing you need to know about Vim is how to save and how to quit. I saved it for the end. Sorry about that. Um, so to save your work, uh, colon W from command mode will write it. There it says Vim demo text, 39 lines written, and um, control, I'm sorry, colon Q will quit. If I want to quit without saving, if I made some changes and I don't want to keep them, um, I can add the exclamation mark right there and that will quit without saving. I don't actually want to do that. This will warn me if I haven't saved it and remind me that I need to go ahead and quit uh, and write before I quit. Um, and finally, if I want to do both of those in one step, WQ is the command to write and then quit. All right. Have a great day, guys. I'll be back soon with the next video.